Hey everybody, welcome to our video on extracting data from an Excel spreadsheet and transferring it to an Access database. So in this video we're going to use ADO and Access to query our Excel spreadsheet. This is going to allow us to treat the rows and columns in the spreadsheet as if they're rows and columns in a database table. This is pretty cool, but there's a lot more code involved. So we need to ask ourselves why would we want to use this method over another method? like uh, we just did a video recently on the transfer spreadsheet method. In the transfer spreadsheet method you can pull an entire spreadsheet worth of data into your database. You can also restrict the rows and columns you pull by giving it a range. And however the limitation of that range is that they have to be contiguous rows and contiguous columns. In other words you give it a range, let's say your upper left hand corner is, is cell A3 and your bottom right hand corner of the range is, is cell D25 Yes, you can pull in just certain data. However, like I said, it has to be contiguous. All You're going to get all the columns in between and all the rows in between 3 and 25. When we use an ADO query, we get to be even more selective about what data we pull from our spreadsheet. You can use a select statement to only select certain columns, and they don't have to be contiguous. They can be spread throughout the spreadsheet. And you can use your WHERE clause to restrict which rows you pull. You could pull rows that only have a 2 in such and such column, or a Z in this other column. So a lot more power, but that power comes at a price, of course, with additional coding. So let's take a look at some changes I've made to our example database. So I've modified our form that we'll be using to execute our import method. I've added a multi-line text box so we can see some counts of the rows we've imported and rows we've updated. The table we're going to update, and this example is the parts table, we have a column here called part number which holds a unique identifier for each part and part name a regular price and a sales price and what we're going to do to this table is we're going to update some of these existing entries and we're going to add some new entries so let's close the table take a look at the spreadsheet we're going to use to do this the uh, example I'm building here is we have a customer that wants to do like a bulk update to their database and they want to feed you a, a spreadsheet with several different types of commands in it so in our spreadsheet here we have a column called part number which is going to correspond to the part number in the database. Part name, price, and sale price. We have a new column here that does not exist in the database table called action. I've got a drop down box on this restricting the customer's entries to new price update and sale price. So a price update value here means that the customer wants us to find an existing entry in the database and update the regular price. The word new here means the customer wants us to insert this row into the database. We have a new product we're going to start selling. And a sales update means they want us to find an existing entry in the database and update just the sale price. Let's get our spreadsheet out of the way and find our code window. That's not our code window. Find our code window. Okay, so let's get started. So let's copy in our variables. I'm going to use a constant again to define the location of our spreadsheet. If this were a productionized database, I'd probably open up a file dialog picker and allow the customer to pick the spreadsheet they wanted to import, but again, we're going to keep it simple here. So we have some new objects here. If we're going to use ADO, we need a connection object. We're going to call that CNN. We have a command object called CMD, and we have a ADODB record set. I also have some long numbers here to hold the numbers of rows we operate on, and then SQL string is going to hold our query string. We're going to give the customers an indication that we're doing something by giving them changing their cursor to an hourglass. We're going to clear out that status box that I showed you a moment ago in the form, make it empty, and issue the do events command to uh, make that visible in the form. Next, we need to define our connection to the spreadsheet. So we're going to create or set CNN, our connection equal to a new ADODB connection. And we'll set up a with CNN and an end with here. And inside there, we'll define the connection to the spreadsheet. I've got some commented code here describing a connection to an Excel 2003 or earlier spreadsheet, and uncommented code here describing a connection to an Excel 2007 and after spreadsheet. Connection strings equal data source equals in our file name, which I have in a constant right here needs to be the full path to the file name, a semicolon, extended properties equal to Excel 12.0 XML, semicolon, header equals yes. Now several things here. Header equals yes 
tells the connection that the top row of the data is actually column headings and it will use these names as though they are column names so in your in your query you can use you can select these as if they're columns in a database table second thing to notice here is we have two double quotes okay the final string that we yield needs to have a single quote surrounding Excel and ending here at the yes which means we have to escape the double quotes with a second set of double quotes All right. And then after we've set up those properties we can issue the open command to the connection that establishes the connection to the spreadsheet next we want to describe our command okay so a command is an object that belongs to a connection and a command is exactly that it's, it's a command that you want to execute using a connection so we'll set our command equal to a new adodb command we want to set the active connection to the connection we just created cnn and we're going to set the command type equal to add command text that means we're going to give it a string containing a query and then we're going to create our record set that we're going to use in just a minute to hold the returned data from the spreadsheet next we're going to create our query this is going to become the command text in just a minute I'm going to select each column name that I want although I could have used star since I'm, I'm selecting all the columns that are in that spreadsheet and from is the name of the tab that you want to query against we are querying the first tab in this spreadsheet and I called it parts update as you can see down here so you put the name parts update enclosed in square brackets followed by a dollar sign All right. Then we finish setting up our command by telling it command.command text equals this SQL we just built. And I'm going to set a few properties for our record set we also created just a minute ago. Cursor location, add use client. That means the cursor location is on our side, okay, in the access side. Cursor type is add open static, meaning we're going to get a static snapshot of data from our spreadsheet. And lock type is add lock read only. We're only going to be able to read the data from this record set we're not going to need to try to modify the record set itself the contents of the record set and then we're going to say record set open using that command we just defined so that will execute our query and populate our record set with the data from the spreadsheet next we're going to set up our read loop okay we're going to do this with a do until do until record set is in end of file and that's going to be the end of our loop right there the last thing we want to do before we get to end of loop is to advance ourselves to the next record in the record set and I'm going to put a label right here that we'll see the use of in just a minute but this is going to be a label that we'll use to get out of our, our logic and get to the read next command from the record set next I'm going to copy in a statement that will check to see if our part number column has any data in it. Since the part number is how we're going to identify which row in our database we want to update, we need to make sure that any row we pull back from our spreadsheet actually has something in this column. All right, if there is nothing in there, then there's no point in us trying to use it to update our database. So if our part number is null or is equal to an empty string, we're going to tell it to go to our get next label, which just will send us to the next record in the record set. I've got a comment here saying potentially in a production science database you might want to log this situation so the customers know they had a problem with the row in their spreadsheet and that that item wasn't updated in the database. I'm going to copy in a ton of code here. This is where the bulk of our action happens here. Okay so I have a select case statement here working on the action column in our spreadsheet so that we can determine what type of query we want to run. Okay, inside each case, we're building a, an SQL string. If it's a, if the action is equal to new, we're going to execute an insert query and insert all the columns in our table. And we're pulling those values from the current row in the record set that we're on. A part number, which we know is not null since we tested it up above here. All these others, I'm going to test for nulls just in case we have missing data in those, and we're going to provide some defaults. So we're going to use the nz function, and if part name is null, we'll give it an empty string. If price and sale price are null, we'll give them a value of zero if they're empty. 
So we build our string, our query string here. Then we use the current DB execute method using SQL as our input. DB fail on error as an option. Execute the query. And then we're going to count how many of these we did. So inserts is a, a variable to hold how many inserts we made. We'll increment it by one. For the sale update and the price update, they're simple update queries. Update the part table. For a sales update, we're going to set the sale price equal to the sales price column from record set. Where, and we have a where clause here, very important, where the part number in the database equals the part number from our record set. Same update, same execute statement, same execute statement, and then a different variable here to hold a counter for how many of these were performed. And price update, the same thing except it's a different column, setting the price equal to the price on the spreadsheet. And then down here we have a case else. If we have a row that doesn't have one of those three values, again, we're going to want to log that somehow and tell the users they had an issue with that. And the last two things we're going to do very quickly here is this. underneath, after we've finished with our loop, we've finished working with our record set completely, we're going to update that text results text box on our form with the counts we had. And then underneath in our exit, underneath our exit label, we want to get rid of all of the objects we created. We created a command object, set it equal to nothing, a connection object, set it equal to nothing, and our record set, set it equal, equal to nothing to release that memory. And that is it for the code. Let's give it a shot. And there we go. So we inserted four new rows, we updated two regular prices, and updated two sales prices. So let's take a look at our table. The 15 through 18 here, those are our four inserts. Where's our spreadsheet? Put our spreadsheet over here and get it out of the way a little bit. There we go. All right. We were supposed to update the price on 1111 motherboard 20199. 20199, we did. We were supposed to update the sales price on 3333. We we're supposed to update it to. 142.50, and we did right there, and etc. We don't need to check each one of these, I've already checked them. And there you go. So, there you have it using ADO to query a spreadsheet to treat your spreadsheet as if it were a database table. I think it's very cool, however, it does require a lot more code. So, we want to make sure that you need the extra functionality it provides. And when you, if you have a simpler method that will work for you, I would suggest definitely using it instead. As usual, I'll have a link to the full code listing in the description down below. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.